So hey guys, my name is Tu. Uh, welcome to the Fang uh, Real Estate Show. Uh, we're back for year 2020 here. Uh, we took a little, uh, um, well, I, I went to a few places, so I was recovering from all the vacation, all the New Year stuff. But now we're back, uh, starting year 2020. Uh, we're gonna, we have a bunch of people lined up already for the next few uh, months. And so we'll at least have, I think, at least eight more shows already uh, lined up. So uh, we come to you guys every Sunday uh, at 11 uh, p.m. every week. You know, just to talk about real estate and the 11 a.m. Yeah, 11 yeah, 11 a.m. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. My, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> People were commenting. So uh, every, every Sunday, 11 a.m., you know, to talk about real estate, how we can help each other uh, in our own community and then the whole community as a whole, uh, the investment community as a whole, just to uh, help, uh, you know, uh, uh, spread the word. Um, and especially, like, uh, you know, I try to get. Uh, experts that are investing in the fields uh, currently, like our guest today. Um, well, he's not really a guest; he's sort of a co-host. Um, and, and you know, to to just uh, <coughs> share our information. So, if you guys can please do like, share. I do post this on our uh, YouTube channel afterwards. So, if you guys miss the live stream, uh, I'll post that. And you guys can watch that later. Uh, with that said, welcome to the show, uh, Zach. Uh, what do you do? I know you've been on the show. Uh, we've been discussing last year a bunch of times already. But what do you do? A quick intro of who you are. Um, oh, I forgot. My name is Two. And then uh, go ahead. Yeah, guys. So uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want to officially welcome everybody to this new decade. All right, it's 2020, yeah. and the next 10 years is going to be unbelievable if you guys take action and do something with your uh, life. All right, so. Just officially welcome you guys, and uh, just kind of a little intro about me. Uh, my name is Zach Fang. Uh, I've been investing in real estate for the last 20 years. Um, I made a ton of money. I lost a ton of money, so I know <laughs> what to do and what not to do, okay? Uh, and I'm just honored to be here, share with you guys uh, my little bit of a uh, life story, and uh, give you guys some pointers, some tips, some nuggets, and hopefully you guys can take it and make the next 10 years your best 10 years ever, all right? Yeah, if you guys uh, haven't watched the old episodes, uh, go ahead and watch the old episodes. Uh, I'll put some link in descriptions uh, on here later. Uh, but it's on the YouTube channel. You could just search uh, Fang Real Estate Show, uh, and we have the old episodes there. Uh, you could go there and find out about Zach's story, how he got started. He started with $2 million in his bank, uh, and now he has, right? Is that, what, <laughs> is that how you got started? I wish, yeah, I wish. I started <laughs> Fresh off the boat, basically. Uh, okay. All right. So you did not have $2 million. So it's okay. You can learn from it. You don't have to have a bunch of money to start investing in real estate uh, and, you know, um, and stuff like that. So what I want us to discuss uh, this week is that tax season is coming up. Uh, you know, this is tax season now. So it's time to start doing your tax and stuff like that. Uh, most of the Hmong uh, community and uh, the general population as a whole, uh, unless you're making a bunch of money, uh, you get uh, tax returns, right? So when you get your tax returns, uh, what are you going to do with that? You're going to go buy a car with it and then let that car depreciate? Or what you could do is our topic today, we're going to talk about seven ways you could leverage that tax return, right? Uh, so most, uh, most of the Hmong people, we get you know, roughly maybe around five ten thousand dollars $10,000 tax return. You know, if you have kids and stuff like that. So what are you going to do this year to leverage that tax return? Instead of, you know, just, you know, paying, you, you know, uh, uh, wasting that money uh, on the Super Bowl or something like that. <laughs> right, right. So uh, <clears throat> let, 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 let's start with that. Let, let's define what leverage is first. Like, like what is leverage? If, if, you have, so, if you do your tax return, you got 10 grand, what's leverage? So, guys, um, leverage is really, I mean, leverage is what... All the most of the billionaires out there made the money from leverage. You know, they take, um, they they take basically um, nothing and be able to create massive wealth uh, from the ability to leverage. You know, and it, you know, there's a lot of way to, ways to leverage. But today, to and I, we're just going to talk more about real estate on how to leverage with real estate, and just by leveraging real estate, just be able to, you know, uh, use creative ideas, uh, small money. Or simply just an idea and just take that idea and be able to 10x it, 20x, 100x it. Uh, it's kind of like 
I, I, I don't have the exact story, but it's like, if you're gonna, if somebody said at one of these stories that if you, if you if you have a long enough stick, you can actually be able to leverage and be able to uh, lift the earth. And that's true. And that's basically uh, what uh, ideas and money uh, you're able to do. You're, you're able to leverage and be able to magnify uh, something small, a small idea or, or a small uh, money that you have. You're able to magnify into a larger amount, you know. Um, and we're going to talk about how, like Tuesday, how you can take that 10 grand that you have. Okay, in today's show, we're going to show you how tank, that take that 10 grand you have, be able to um, be able to leverage into 100 grand or 200 grand in terms of profit or net worth by the end of the year. Okay, so if you guys are excited about that, we're going to share that. We're going to give you guys some ideas. And uh, for some of you here, for sure, you'll take these ideas and be able to do exactly that, if not more. So leverage is something that you, <laughs> like an example is you could take, I mean, what our discussion is, take that 10 grand and then multiply it. Use leverage, right. multiply it, turn it to 100 by the end of this year. So that's, that's sort of something that you could do with the power of leverage. Uh, yeah. I forget who said it, but exactly to your point earlier, um, one of the older guys, uh, maybe he was Pascal or someone. Right. Says, you know, guys, uh, yeah. give me something to stand on and I could move the earth, right? Uh, with right, leverage. Exactly. Something like uh, that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So before we go to specific strategies, uh, these seven uh, strategies or seven ways to leverage your tax income, if you guys can, uh, we will leave some uh, time at the end to ask questions too. So if you guys want, go ahead and, you know, put your comments below or questions below, uh, and then we could uh, uh, go from that. Uh, these seven steps, maybe if you guys – or sitting down in front of your computer, you should take notes. Uh, I'm taking notes. See my pen here and some papers. So, so uh, you guys should take notes so that you guys could uh, uh, use these uh, uh, these steps. Okay. So go ahead, Zach. What's uh, what's the first way that you could leverage out of the seven? So I guess the the first way, the easiest way, and the way that I I recommend everybody should you know simply do is you can basically um. <clears throat> You know how you could take that ten grand, like Tuesday. You could, you could, you can buy a car with it. You could buy a big screen TV with it. You can party with it. You can, you can buy all kinds of depreciating assets and stuff like that. Or you could throw it at the bank, and the bank's just gonna make ten times your money and pay you, you know, less than one percent, right? Yeah. So yeah. what if, what if you could? Uh, the easiest way and the lazy way, I would call it, is to basically take that money and see if you can be like the bank, you know. Uh, uh, and but but instead of putting to a bank, put into another financial institution where uh, your money's just gonna work harder for you. So if you're just a lazy guy, you want you don't want to do anything with real estate, then just just take the ten grand you have and perhaps uh, purchase like a, a single premium um, a whole life policy, you know, yeah, uh, or just an annual premium policy where <clears throat> if you know that for the next ten years you're gonna be getting ten thousand a year from uh, tax returns or whatever. Then you can just open an annual policy and just throw, dump the money in there um, into a, a single premium uh, whole life product or some kind of single premium product. What that does, and there's and there's a lot of different products. We're not going to go into details because you know it's going to take so much time. But they have these products where uh, you're able to basically dump in the money but have access to the cash value immediately uh, if you need to for other investment purposes. Uh, but the whole difference is that if you throw your money in the bank, the bank's going to give you less than one percent for it. Or they're going to turn around, they're going to lend your money 10 times and you get nothing for that. But if you were able to put into another financial institution like uh, an insurance company, you dump the money in, your money's earning, you know, between 46% as far as uh, um, uh, 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 dividend and interest and things like that. So automatically your money is already earning uh, 46 times what the bank's paying you. But on top of that, you're able to access your cash just like you're able to access your cash at the bank. It's just that liquid. Where whenever you see an opportunity, you can take the money and perhaps you can leverage it again into real estate. Um, but just having your money work harder for you, uh, to me, it just, it's just a no-brainer. So that's basically uh, kind of like what I would recommend somebody do. And on yeah. top of that, I mean, on top of that, just real quick, here's the other benefit. There's so many other benefits in terms of, you know, uh, a lot of other things. But you're also immediately able to... Uh, take that 10000 if you were to put into a, a financial institution like an insurance company and be able to add to your estate immediately by twenty to thirty to forty fifty thousand dollars and what I'm trying to say is that guys if you were to do a single premium dumping on a life insurance policy depending upon your age you know, your ten grand could 
immediately purchase you 20,000, 30,000, up to 50, 60,000. Again, depends on your age. So whereby you're able to immediately increase increase your uh, estate by an extra 20 to $50,000 immediately. You know, so yeah. God forbid yeah. something happens to you, your family's not gonna get the 10 grand, they might get 50 grand, which again, it, it's a no brainer. So that's, that strategy is basically the easy way of doing it. And you still have access to your cash in case you need it for real estate and other purposes, which we're gonna go into next. So, right, so, so then uh, uh, let's step back a little bit. Uh, uh, what is life insurance, anyways? First, like, like, so, uh, you know, like, like in, in a general sense, what's what's like insurance or life insurance? Yeah, so life, you know, of of course, you know, um, we've been in this country for forty years now, so everybody knows based on life insurance. It's it's really mainly to the whole purpose behind life insurance is to um, you know insure your life, your your life earnings, and things like that in case something happens to you. You know, so to basically protect. Uh, uh, protect your, yourself, your family. So God forbid something happens to you um, that your family could uh, have your income for perhaps the next five, 10 years. Really in the beginning, they really bought, bought these for uh, income protection. You know, yeah. So for example, if I make, if I make 100 grand a year and um, if I want to ensure that my family is going to have 100 grand a year of income for the next 20 years, then I basically take 100 grand that I make every year, multiply that by uh, 20 and there's my benefit that I can purchase, you know, uh, so in case something happens to me, um, you know, I, my family, my wife and kids can have 20 years of income un, uninterrupted, 100 grand a year for the next 20 years. So, you know, that's kind of the main purpose of it. Uh, but what what we do, and we'll go into another session about this, and I think who's got a, another expert coming in next week to talk about that, yeah. is that, you know, we're going to use this as a, as, a, as, a, as a bank, you know, where you can... Um, be able to again use leverage you know uh, you not just basically have a death insurance but be able to use your policy while you're still alive uh, to be able to multiply and make money with it you know that's basically yeah. <laughs> yeah so i think <coughs> we'll have a show about it uh with, with another person but right. i mean you talked about this in, in one of the shows in the past too right. where you were able to if you dump that 10 grand in you still have access to that 10 grand if you need it so it's right. essentially like a savings account Right. Instead of Absolutely. like your regular savings account, this savings account pays you like four to five to ten, whatever uh, percentage. Right. Depend, depend upon yeah, the yeah, exactly. Depend upon it. the policy. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Depend on the policy, and then you still have access to the cash if you want to use that money. And if you let's say you make five percent on the policy, you take that cash, you go dump into another real estate deal, whatever. You make fifteen percent on that money. Now right. you're making like a total twenty percent. That's how you leverage, right? So you can exactly. use that so policy to leverage. Right. Your money, your money is working harder for you because it's doing two jobs for you. It's it's grown within the the, the cash value is grown within a, a, a life insurance policy, but then you're able to access the cash value and do something else with it while the money's still growing there. Basically, you, you're doing what, what the banks are doing. You're you know you're you're able to make your money uh, work multiple times because if you look at a banking institution, right? If you deposit a thousand into the bank. Yeah. Through federal regulation, the bank is able to lend out ten times your one thousand. So the bank has based automatically one hundred grand to lend out. Yep. You can't do that, but you could at least do it two times. So if yep. you put into that insurance, company, you could actually have your money grow. <laughs> and still be able to access access it to invest in other things too. Okay? Yeah, so yeah. a powerful tool. Yeah. So if you're gonna go buy a car, anyways, put dump it into a life insurance policy, then go buy your car. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> that's how it. you yeah. leverage your money, right? That's exactly it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so powerful. I, I was just at uh, uh, I went to two uh, uh, financial institutions, uh, uh, or life insurance companies, uh, things yesterday. So it was really great. A lot of great information from them. Um. All right. What? Uh. Maybe I should do one. I have a way to leverage too. I recommend everybody do it. You know. I mean. Yeah. You know. Why not? You know. Um. All right, so I'll, I'll take the next one. Um, another way you could leverage your money, okay, number two to leverage your money is to do lease options. And I think we talked about lease option in the past. Um, um, but lease option is, is, you know, essentially you don't, um, uh, or, or I think you explain lease option, then I'll give an example. You want to do that? Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> lease option is basically, um, the most creative way to own real estate without a lot of risk. You know, yeah. you could um, <clears throat> you could control a lot of properties like that uh, through a lease option. 
And uh, I think uh, uh, you know, one scenario, we're going to talk about this um, in a bit, is that you can take a very small amount of money, uh, lease a property with the option to purchase, you know, uh, the property. Yeah. So uh, what that means is that let's just say um, in the market like this, um, if you were to lease option, so say, for example, at least uh, two has a property for sale and we come to some kind of negotiation and, you know, he agrees to lease the property to me with the option to purchase. So basically, um, it would be you have two contracts and I'm not going to go into details because this is you, you, you <laughs> yeah. right. You're yeah. going to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, to so he's going to lease the property to me, but I can control the property. And, and I, at the end of the term, if I don't want to buy, I can just simply uh, say, hey, two, thank you. And I, I can walk away. Let's just say the market crashed uh, two years from now. I can say, two, here's your property back and I'm good with it, man. You know, good luck. And, you know, um, you know, see you next time. So yeah. uh, it's, it's a great way to control a lot of property with very little money or risk. Yeah. So uh, I actually did. I'm actually on both sides of the lease option before. So I'm actually a leasee and a leaser. Leaser. O-R. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, I, I do rent to own to some tenants uh, and, you know, it helps them out. But I'm also on the other side where, uh, you know, I didn't do it, but I, I got I, I negotiated a contract with my wife uh, and her sister. So they put uh, five grand each. Right. So that's ten thousand dollars for the lease option. Uh, they do a five year lease on this property. It was a duplex. Uh, they pay sixteen fifty a month. Uh, but each uh, but total they get like. Uh, let me see. Let me, I'll give you guys the actual numbers. So, uh, 16, 1250. So, so total, they actually get 2850 from the rent, uh, from the tenants that they rent to. So they pay nice. $10,000 down for the contract. And so the contract is five years and they essentially control that property. Uh, and we already, they already negotiated like, a uh, um, um, a, a, a purchase price already. So nice. if, even if the property goes up in value, they purchase it at that price. Right. Uh, even if the property goes down in value, they'll purchase it at that price. But if the property goes down in value five years from now, maybe they don't have to buy it, right? They could just give it back to right. the owner. And, you know, that's perfectly uh, legal. The owner cannot force you to purchase the property. Right. The owner just gives you the option to purchase right. the property. So that's why it's called lease option, you know? You're renting... And and then and you no have the bank, option to purchase. And you didn't have to go to you didn't have to go to the bank, right? Yeah, no credit yeah, poll right. or anything no on my yeah. wife and them, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they manage the property. They they pay sixteen fifty to the uh, current owner. Um, and why would the owner want to do that? Maybe uh, we'll we'll save that for another segment. Um, right. But th th there's a reason why the owner is okay with doing that. Um, it, it, uh, so then they pay sixteen fifty. They still have twelve hundred uh, left. They use uh, six hundred to pay all the bills and stuff like that. Uh, they save two hundred dollars uh, uh, for capex and all that other expense. So they still making four hundred dollars a month. So, Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so positive cash flow <laughs> after everything. They still make four hundred dollars a month. That's about like forty eight percent return on their ten thousand dollars, right? Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. <laughs> so within two years, they made their money back already. And then after that, it's just, you know, it, it's just the money that, uh, just extra money now, right? And so that's a way for you to leverage your, your tax return. That exactly $10,000 that my, my wife and they did. Uh, and then also, I, I had to do it because now they get to kind of uh, 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 practice being landlords and, you know, going through that tenant and uh, landlord process, right? So it's a good way for you to start if you're new. And, and you know, yeah, go ahead. So that's that's actually a very, very um, creative strategy. And uh, I'm just going to add a little bit to that. Um, you know, uh, speaking, of, we, we keep talking about cars. So in case you guys have a, a junky car and you want to go get a new car, um, whose strategy is perfect. So instead of buying a car, go get a property, a duplex, a triplex, at least option, at least option it. And now you're getting this six seven hundred dollar a month cash flow and then take that money and go buy two cars for you and your wife buy her a Toyota minivan yep. and buy yourself a Honda Civic you know you're good to go I mean that's basically what I did when I when I bought my Mercedes I'm like you know what I'm not gonna pay for my Mercedes I'm gonna make sure my tenants pay for my Mercedes and that's <laughs> yeah, what I did exactly. I went out there and my Mercedes payment was six hundred bucks a month so I said you know what let me go get a property that's got a cash flow and the bucks and I'll just have these guys pay for my car um 
So why would I, why would I do that? Because, you know, as, as you know, China, uh, you know, it depreciates. I said, you know, if I'm going to buy something that's going to depreciate, I'm going to have my tenants pay, buy me this car. So yeah. uh, my Mercedes that I have basically is being paid for by, um, you know, all this cash flow that comes in. So that's kind of how you can do it. So instead of taking the money, do that, take the money, go, go like do what two says, go find a duplex, duplex, lease option it, use that cash flow, buy a car, get a vacation, or you know, if you like me, send me some money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yep, so that's great. See, instead of you buying a car, put it in uh, uh, yeah. an asset, uh, like something like a real estate uh, lease option deal. And then now you have money to buy a car. You yeah, now, now, your ten- now, you, now, now you, your tenants are buying you the car. Yeah, you know? yeah, your tenants yeah. are buying you the yeah. car. Yeah. All right, so that's number two, lease option. Uh, if you guys have more questions about that, on any of these topics, you know, leave your comments and questions below and we'll try to answer them. And maybe in the future, we'll we'll do like a, a show specifically on just one of the uh, topics here. Uh, okay. So, all right. So what, what's number three? So uh, number three here, um, here's one way that you can, you can immediately make a hundred grand. Okay. In the next six months. And when I say a hundred grand, I'm talking about net worth or if you sell it, then you can capitalize on it. So, yep. uh, and this is what I did in my first deal and just go out there uh, so I'm just going to talk in general because I know in different markets, you have different prices, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit more of a, of a California market. So let's just say you go out there, you find a property that's worth 400,000 ARV. The retail is 400, you know, and let's just say this property, because we're, we're investors. So we're, we're not looking for like shiny properties. We're looking for distressed properties, properties that need work. So let's just say you go out there and you find this 400,000 ARV property and you buy it for two seven. Right, $270,000. Now, you have 10 grand in your pocket. So, guess what? You go, you apply for FHA 203k loan, right? So, you pay 270 for it, borrow 30,000 to pay for it. And, and again, the federal government, you know, is going to give you the money to fix this property, you know. So, they're going to give you 30,000 to you buy for 270, they give you 30,000 to fix it. Now, you into this property for a whole total of 300,000 but if the property is worth 400 damn automatically guys you made 100 grand right there yeah. using that 10 grand because at 270,000 uh your down payment would be three and a half percent that's going to be roughly eight to nine thousand so yeah. right there you're able to take that ten thousand and multiply it to 100 grand and you can do that in within this year if you look for opportunities like that are everywhere it doesn't matter which market you're in you look for it, you'll find find it. So now your 10 grand becomes a hundred grand. So next year, if you just do it again, that's 200. Do it again. In a matter of five, six, seven years, you'll be a millionaire. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you want to do it again, you got to sell a house. Because, right. Uh, but I'm just saying, oh, no, yeah. you can sell it. You can sell it. You can refinance, pull the cash out. Oh, right. Yeah. Refinance, yeah. yeah. Refinance, cash out, take that money and leverage it again. So this yeah. 10 grand you have this year, guys. You could be a millionaire in five, seven years just by, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it, people do it all the time, you know, yeah. all the time. So we might as well just play the same game. I mean, this is, you know, the way this country is designed is for you to do this kind of stuff. If you, you don't do it, then, you know, you're just going to be stuck in a, in a rat race. Yeah. So you're saying take the $10,000 and then put it in, uh, da- use it as a down payment at 3.5%, you know, right. on something that it's like, uh, uh, on a property that maybe needs to be fixed. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> you know, needs to and be the fixed. Government, the government, yeah, the government's going to yeah. give you money to fix it anyway. So leverage, we're talking about leverage. So you're taking, you know, you got 10 grand refund. You're taking seven, $8,000, which is roughly three and a half percent of the 270, yeah. right? So you're taking that little money you got and now you're able to like 10 exit in about six months time. Now you have a hundred grand. I yeah. mean, I know that a lot of Hmong people are now making a six figure income, but geez, you know, if you make six figure income, uh, net worth uh, in about three to six months. That's pretty impressive, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So if you guys want to know more about the 203K program, FHA uh, 203K, uh, in the past we had a discussion on that. So just go back to the YouTube channel and look through that. Um, but if you guys have one more questions about that, uh, just let us know. Uh, leave in the comments and we'll try to answer them later. Um, but yeah, that's a great program. You've done it. Uh, that's how you guys started, right? Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. then, you know, that's how I got started too. I bought a fourplex with a two or three K loan. So uh that's great. Um 
All right. What's uh what's number what number so number three is uh uh FHA two or three K loan. Uh let's do number four. So uh subject to right? So so what what's subject to and then maybe I'll do a quick example on that too. Man, I love subject to, you know, <laughs> and again, it doesn't require, uh, it doesn't require uh, credit. It doesn't require a lot. And it's, it just requires a little know-how, a little knowledge. And again, I, I'm sure too that you're going to do a whole subject on this because again, yeah. it's a lot to go into it, but uh, you could basically take over somebody's property, you know, uh, with, uh, uh, through their existing mortgage, you know, so that's why they call it subject to because it's subject to the existing mortgage that's already in place on a property uh, simply by, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that there's a difference between your deed and your mortgage, right? You know, so, yeah. you know, uh, you can just, you know, like I could just quick claim my property to two right now, even though I have a mortgage, I just say, hey, here's a property. Now two owns the property, which is a mortgage separate from the, uh, uh, the deed. Um, yeah. And man, you could just take over all kinds of property, especially with people who are distressed and this and that, where they're motivated, they're, moving out of state or vacant properties, whatever, you can just come in and say, look, listen, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do you a big favor. I'll just take over your mortgage and I'll make the payments and I'll take it from here. And listen, you know, don't worry anymore. You're good to go. So that's a, that's, that's, that's a fantastic strategy. And guys, you know, uh, no risk, no risk, no credit, nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah. So an example of subject to, uh, so subject to, you're subject to the mortgage. You're purchasing the property subject to that mortgage. So, you're still you <coughs> you're keeping the existing mortgage in place, right? Uh, and so you're just taking over someone's mortgage, essentially. Very much, yeah. And then yeah. you they give you the property, you take over the existing mortgage, and maybe you could pay them, or if you negotiate a price, maybe you don't pay them. Maybe you just help them move or something like that. Uh, but one of my buddies, he uh, so I uh, I he found a property. They don't want to deal with it anymore. All that stuff, okay? Because uh, you know, they just got tired of it. Um, and so he gave them like six grand. He sent, he didn't have to, but he gave them six grand to help them move and, and stuff like that. Uh, and so then he took over the mortgage and he keeps, he just continues to pay the mortgage. <coughs> so you, you don't even need to go and qualify. <laughs> you don't right. need to go to a bank right. because there's already a right. mortgage in place. Right. Now I do have to say, um, uh, uh, anyway, so he cleaned it up and then he put it back on the market and, you know, now he rents it for, you know, like almost like double the, the original, uh, uh, almost double of how much he pays to the mortgage, right? So he's making cash flow there. Um, I, I mean, there is a risk. The only risk is that um, the subject to the bank could uh, call the note due, right? They could call the mortgage due. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a due on sale clause on a lot of mortgage uh, uh, loan documents. However, what I found so far is that, or or my <coughs> my experience so far is that the bank don't. If you continue to pay uh, all the time, the bank don't want to foreclose on your property because it takes time to foreclose. It takes times of money for a bank to foreclose on that note, on that mortgage, right? So they don't want to take the risk of like losing like six months to a year or even two years. I think in California, you know, before they could foreclose on the house, so. Uh, uh, most banks or lenders, you know, if you think from their side that they, they, they wouldn't really want to call the note. And I, and I think, I think there's <clears throat> some kind of legal precedence and don't hold me to this. Um, but I was talking to, um, some attorney about it. Um, they technically, I mean, if you, if you take over a property, uh, they only have a certain amount of time to do that do on sale clause. You know, uh, I think it's like 30 or 90 days or something like that. If they don't exercise a do on sale clause within those time frame, then the bank basically uh, kind of kind of waived their rights to that oh. pretty much, you know. Oh. Uh, yeah. So so I mean again, don't hold me to that. There's a legal precedence you have to look it up. Um, simply because <coughs> the way that they look at they look listen, if if you're gonna do a do on, do on sale clause, why didn't you do it? You know, how come you waited for like three years later? You know, so so <laughs> the court, the court can be like, dude, you already know the whole thing. Why 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 you you know why accept all these payments yeah. after these two three years and now. You're just gonna call this no. So, so there's a legal precedence about that. And if they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it within 30 to 90 days. Uh, but don't worry about it. If that happens, she's you know, let's call uh, my brother Two Pang. He's got all the cash and go bail you out. <laughs> oh, I wish all my all my cash are 
Maybe I'll mm-hmm. dump it to a life insurance policy. Yeah. And then now I have all the cash. <laughs> but anyways, uh, hey, listen, uh, this is a quick uh, advertisement here. Uh, uh, um, uh, if you guys, and again, this community, Hmong community is so big now, uh, let's let's not let our brothers and sisters go into foreclosure, uh, go into uh, uh, bankruptcy. I mean, if you know somebody who's struggling with their mortgage, hey, listen, I'll tell you what, let me know. You know, we'll take over their mortgage. I mean, we'll yeah. take over their mortgage. Uh, maybe give them some money to move. It depends on how much they owe, and depends on um, depends on a few things. So don't don't just say, "Hey Zach, give me a hundred grand." <laughs> but but yeah. if if you know any brothers and sisters out there who's having trouble with their mortgage, or they're gonna walk away, and and don't do that. Uh, let me and two know, and maybe we can save their credit. We can save their uh, save them from bankruptcy, save them from foreclosure <coughs> by having two and I take over their property, uh, perhaps give them some uh, money to move away. And then we can save the credit so that they can buy another house sometime in the near future instead of being stuck in a foreclosure for 10 years. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, so, uh, so the whole point ask. has been, being, yeah, that's great, Zach. Uh, the whole point as being investors really, we're here to solve problems, right? Right. And, and right. usually, like, uh, so if we have, uh, our, our, in our mom community specifically, if, if, or anyone else, actually, but if you know someone that, you know, they're having issues with, uh, you know, their mortgage or, or, you know, their properties, what it is is that we could offer some assistance, you know, and, um, you know, help them out with that situation. So as investors, we were really here to solve problems, right? Yeah, there's actually, a, <clears throat> I know there's some monkey people that have a problem. So uh, if you know that they're having problems, guys, uh, don't be shy, reach out, because, you know, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. You know, everybody yeah. goes through financial problems, you know, you know. Everybody, you know, uh, so let us know. And, uh, you know, we're like, uh, like my brother Tuesday, we're a solution. We'll, we'll give you some kind of solution or give you some kind of tip, things like that, yeah. you know, or maybe yeah. even stall your foreclosure, stall yeah. your, uh, 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 you know, in the bank so you can stay in the market. We'll give you some tips. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then if it, it, it gets to a point where, <coughs> where we don't buy it, but, you know, we just help you out and, and, and you know, give you tips and strategies, basically. All right. Yeah, so a good good plug. We should do yeah. more plugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's yeah. number three. Oh no, that, that's number four. Subject to right. Uh, what's number five? Man, this is the this is the the other one that I really like wholesaling, guys. So think about it this way. All right, so let's talk about the ultimate leverage. All right, uh, one of my mentors told me that Zach, you know, whatever you have in your bank account, you know, you should be able to leverage that 20 times so i said wow you know i never thought of it like that you know Uh, because i'm always thinking like you know putting paying cash for everything and he said no 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 you should not pay cash for everything you should leverage as much as you can but anyways um let's just say you have a you have this ten thousand dollars right what if you were to take this ten thousand dollars okay and divide it into 500 so divide it divide to 20 so now you have 500 you have 20 of these 500 dollars units okay yeah, so now yeah. you take 10 grand divide it by 20 got 500 bucks a piece right take these 500 dollars go out there and you can actually um tie up a bunch of property through you know, making an offer so first of all you negotiate the price you tie it up put a 500 dollars uh, earnest money deposit and now you can go out there and you can wholesale it so you can in essence take this 10 grand you have all right, go tie up a property. Let's just say the average wholesale fee is ten thousand dollars, right? Now you can now you can take that that little five hundred dollar tie up into uh, in, in that, that five hundred unit you have and make ten grand from it, and you do that twenty times. Now you have two hundred thousand dollars, assuming uh, a, a wholesale profit of ten grand times twenty deals, two hundred grand. So by the end of the year, easily, guys, you can make two hundred grand just from that leverage strategy through wholesale. You know. Two hundred grand from ten thousand dollars. That's twenty times twenty x. And, and, and twenty x. And then, you know when you do that, guys. By the end of the year, you know, uh, you know, you can you can you can call your boss, and instead of calling in sick, you can call in well. Well, boss, I'm not coming in anymore. You're fired. You know, so you can fire your boss. You know, so guys, uh, it's. It, it, you know, I know there's a lot of investors that listen here that they're doing it. You know, there's a yeah. few guys I know in the uh, Moan group that are doing it, killing yeah. it, you know, yeah. with these little wholesale strategies. Uh, and they're making obscene amounts of money. And 
uh, they're laughing to the bank all the time. Yeah, you know, I, I think I see two Vang. He's always laughing at the title company. That's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, his happy place or something. You know, right? You know, so so there's he, guys he, that are he, killing he, it. You know, he practically um, lived over there. <laughs> it can be it can be done. You know, uh, so definitely doable. Uh, plus, other thing too, guys, is um, you know, wholesale through auctions. You know, like uh, you yeah. guys heard me talk about this all the time. You know, um, and this is you know when you when you buy from the auction. Uh, it's a little bit different. You can't do the five hundred dollar thing like you do with a personal owner, but you can certainly win a bid on. Like I, I, I buy you know one or two houses every month uh, through uh, online auctions. You know, yeah. I, I tie it up with uh, what are usually they want three percent. You know, so I put four or five thousand dollars tie up a property, and I usually um, because you're able to get it such a good deal, I'm able to wholesale it immediately uh, within that thirty day time frame and double my money pretty fast so yeah. uh like you said you can take that you can take your 10 grand for tie a bunch of properties wholesale it or you know if you uh are busy you can basically bid online and uh, win these auctions and and, and and you can uh again wholesale it that way too so wholesaling strategy uh, is a perfect <laughs> way to bring revenue real fast and be able to uh get out the rat race yeah if you just you don't even split it into 20 but if you just split it into two use five grand each to win two properties Exactly. Uh, you do that, let's just say four times or five times out of the year, right? That's already like ten times your money already. That's right. So, hey, I need to do that, dude. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So that's great. Host, uh, number five, wholesaling. Uh, uh, you you leverage that money uh, wholesale, and you know you can make ten to twenty times your your in, uh, uh, twenty. 10, 20 times at ten thousand uh, dollars within this year, so uh, that's great. Uh, number six, I'll take number six. Um, yeah. Syndication. <clears throat> if you guys don't know, um, I invest in multifamily, or you know, uh, we're moving a lot of our assets through multifamily. So a way for you to, uh, if you don't want to do to manage and, and stuff like that, to manage the property and, and things like that, what you could do is you know buy into a syndication. So what that is is like they have um a, let's say like a hundred unit building, and so you know they needed the down payment um uh, equity raise or the 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 down payment uh to purchase that property, so you could go in and use your money and pull all that money together with other investors right <coughs> they'll usually have a a general partner that uh, helps uh, structure all of this right. A general partner or a sponsor that structure all of this, and you could put your ten thousand dollars in there and ride that that uh, profit or ride that uh, um, you know that real estate transaction of that hundred thousand or, or that hundred uh, unit uh, property. And because it's uh, multifamily, it's more efficient, and so they're able to pay anywhere from you know six percent to fifteen percent uh, return on your money. So you could easily just put that in there and make you know, six to 15% uh, percent of your money that year, right? So that's like, and you don't have to do anything with that. You just put the money in, you get mail, you, you get checks every month or every quarter from, from the sponsor. So that's a way that, you know, if you don't want to do anything at all, you could put your money in uh, syndication deals, um, you know, essentially pools of money uh, with other investors and, you know, you, you make money that way. So that's a great way to leverage uh, your money. And ultimately, even at the end of, of that that uh, cycle, whether it's three, five, or ten, or three, five, seven, or ten years, when they sell that hundred unit uh, property, you're usually getting a hundred fifty percent return on that money anyway. So you know these are pretty safe um, uh, investment, um, I, I think, um, that you and can it's easily pa passive. make. Passive and it's yeah. passive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's passive. Yeah. So we have a guy uh, that I interviewed a while back already that's doing this with his money. Uh, and <clears throat> you guys could go back and watch that episode. Um, but, you know, he was able to, you know, uh, uh, passively, uh, you know, get money every month, mail check, uh, um, mailbox checks every month, right. except they right. just deposit directly to his account, I think. <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, that's a way of uh, syndication. I, I, I really like that uh, in the multifamily space. So. Uh, Nice. Yeah, uh, that's a nice. way for you to leverage your money. You don't get uh, 20 times like what Zach is doing, but you don't have to do any work. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's All right so that's number six, uh, syndication. <laughs> um, 
All right, what's the last one? Number seven. All right, so number seven is basically this similar to syndication. Here, we're talking about partnership here. So, um, and when I say partnership here, I'm talking about um, partnering with. So there's there's three components to partnership: knowledge, cash, credit. Right? Knowledge, yeah. cash, credit. So let's just say you got you got you got the ten grand. So now you got cash, right? But you don't have the knowledge. Well, go find somebody that you can pair up with. So use your cash, their knowledge, and partner with them and split the deal. Because what's going to happen is that now you're using your cash, but you're leveraging the guy's knowledge and you're learning in the process. And so basically, you're you're learning and you're earning at the same time. All right. Uh, or the other other concept is that <clears throat> like the two or three K strategy. Let's just say. Um, uh, you don't have money, but you got excellent credit, you know, like you got excellent credit, but then you don't have money and you don't have knowledge. So use your credit to go get a tr conventional loan, buy uh, uh, through 203K, um, buy through uh, putting uh, some money down. So you leverage your credit, you know, um, and use that credit to make money for you. So so partner with people who have knowledge, either knowledge, yeah. either credit or cash, okay? Yeah. And if you, and, and I'm, again, I'm, Kind of throw this out there too uh me and two we're um we're available guys you know so if anybody yeah. wants to partner with us on any deal and we don't and and this is just an f we, we don't we don't do all kinds of deal but you know we'll do a case by case if you bring us a deal and <clears throat> we have the knowledge i have the credit i got the cash so if you bring us a deal two and i we, we're, we're more than happy to uh split the pie with you uh 50 50 you know so let's just say you know you found you, you let's just say you know your brother-in-law uh, he's he decides that he's gonna go to Laos and stay there yeah. forever. He wants to get rid of his property and he wants to get rid of ASAP because his uh, young wife is waiting for him. Whatever, right? You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll take we'll 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 show you what to do. You know, we'll either take a subject to lead option or if he wants <coughs> cash now. We'll take cash uh, from a private lender or our pocket, whatever. Do the deal with you, 50, 50, 50 so that you know what to do. You know, we're holding your hand, you're making money, and then the next you'll know what to do, you're on your own. But at least, you know, uh, we're going to provide the knowledge, the credit, the cash. Okay? Yep. So that's partnership. So don't, don't um, you know, like I said, don't be afraid to partner with people who have the knowledge, cash, and credit because, you know, you got to, you know, you, you got you to gotta learn, you know. And, and if, you, if you're just going to try to, like, learn on your own and through all this stuff, you can do it too. Uh, but if you work with somebody who's already done it, it's just so much easier. So sometimes partnering with people uh, can really be beneficial. And I, I highly encourage it. You know? yep. Yeah. So if you have 10 grand and you want to do real estate, go find someone to partner with. You're going to learn a lot from them. Uh, and, you know, if you get a small cut, not even 50, I would partner and get like 10% of the cut. And I get to learn from the person. Like, like I think that value, it's like so much that you're getting paid to learn. So, you know, uh, and, and you know that uh, because they're in the deal with you, uh, you know, if you win together, you lose together. Right. So uh, uh, I would I would definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, recommend going out there and partner this year, year 2020. No, not even this year, this decade, like you said. Yeah, that's right. Go buy partners. <laughs> <laughs> and do right. deals together. You can do it on deal deal to deal basis, right? Yeah. So that's Absolutely. great. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, all right. So uh that's uh um uh, number seven, uh seven ways to leverage your tax returns, right? So number seven, partnership. Go partner with people. Uh, uh that's the whole point of uh why I try uh put this Hmong community, uh Hmong investor group together, right? Uh, and uh, all the other Facebook group is really to, you know, f uh, help network and, and find people to partner with uh, and help each other out, essentially. So, uh, again, to recap, seven ways to leverage your tax returns, right? Uh, step one, I mean, uh, uh, the first way, uh, put your money in life insurance, right? The proper life insurance, not every life insurance policy <laughs> is created equal, but the proper life insurance policy could be a game changer. And, you know, you could put <coughs> put your money in there. All right. Step two, lease option. Right. You've done a bunch of those. Uh, I mean, not step two, but uh, the uh, second way you could leverage your uh, tax return, lease option. Uh, the third way, uh, FHA or FHA 2 or 3K loans. Uh, we both done that. That's how we got started. Uh, number... <coughs> Number four, subject to, 
Uh, number five, uh, wholesaling. So tied up all these properties. And like you said, you wanted to split 20 ways? Yeah. Like 20 that's deals? Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 20 X, you're $10,000. That's right. Uh, number six, uh, syndications. Um, if you want to do it passively. Um, I know that, uh, well, well, we'll talk more about that. And then uh, number seven, partnerships. All right, so seven ways. Uh, how many of these are you going to do this year with, with your tax return? I actually have to pay tax, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> but if you have $10,000, how many of these are you going to do that? I think that's the question. <laughs> I, I would do all of them, you know. Yeah. I would do all of them. Yeah, you know, I would do all of them. <laughs> yeah, but, me uh, too, man. All right, so if you guys are joining us or been uh, 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 listening to us discuss, if, uh, now we're kind of opening it up to um, a question. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the uh, 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 segment, uh, leave them in the comments uh, below or on the side if you're watching this uh, on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and then we'll uh, go through those questions. And if we can't get through your questions, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, I'll message you guys later about it or I'll comment and reply to those questions. Uh, but before we get there, um, there's a bonus. There's a bonus a way for you to leverage your tax returns. Can you talk briefly about <coughs> what's a bonus way that you could leverage your tax return? Where and how you should invest that money? Uh, you caught me by surprise on that one. So you oh, can okay. talk about that one. <laughs> so the eighth way that you should invest, uh, leverage your uh, money is to invest in yourself, right? You've done That's this right. so much, right? Yeah. So yes. w w what's, uh, what, what have you done last year to invest in yourself? Is that? <clears throat> you know, um, I know you went, to, you went to so many places. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a true believer of a lifelong learner, you know? So uh -huh. like, I, I, I don't know. I just, you know, like, I just love to learn. Like, I, I, read, I read a lot of books on real estate, business, and everything in general. Uh, I go to as many seminars as I can because I just don't think I, nobody can know it all. And I'm just a lifelong learner. And I like to just meet people and find out what they know. Maybe they can just give me one nugget here and one nugget there. So the bonus, like, to say is, guys, you know, the best, I think the best investment, even better then really say it even better than what we've been telling you is you invest in yourself. If you invest in yourself, it's actually more than 10 X, more than 20 X. It's a thousand X if you invest in yourself. So don't be shy to spend a little money on a book. Don't be shy to spend a little money on a seminar. Don't be, you know, your money doesn't do anything sitting at the bank under the mattress. So invest in yourself. If you invest in yourself, Believe me, it's gonna pay a thousand x for sure. You know, what I mean, I didn't have a formal education, I didn't have a college education, but I spent a ton of money on you know on knowledge on on, on seminars and things that I pay for, you know mentors and everything else. Uh, uh, and and you know you have to be like that. You have to kind of like uh, somebody told me that you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You never stay the same. You know, yeah. so yeah. you're not constantly learning. Then you're just getting worse. You're like you're you're just you're just turning brown. You're just just gonna decay and die. <laughs> you're you, know decaying. I mean? you know, so you have to learn and be a green. Uh, yeah, be green all the time and learn. You know, that's kind yeah. of key. So invest in yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I would say if you get ten thousand dollars, at least put five thousand dollars to invest in yourself this year. You know, go to seminars like you went to Vegas. Uh, the, to yeah, invest. You invest. You've been investing for 20 years and you're still going to like seminars to learn. So that's great. Um, last year I went to Dallas for uh, a multifamily uh, conference. And then after that, uh, you know, at the end of the year, we went to uh, Florida to meet up with uh, Sai and Chai and Brian and a bunch of those guys down there. So that's a great experience, you know, to learn about um, Airbnb and assisted living and, you know, just to kind of pick their brains and see what they do. and and you know uh, the the ideas of investing and, and things like that. We met a bunch of people there. Uh, on top of that, we get to hang out with my son on a, on a boat cruise. So <laughs> it's not just all business. Sometimes you get to uh, have fun and, and see other things too. So I would say at least spend that uh, you know half of your tax return this year 
and go invest in yourself, you know. And um, like you said, get books too. I, 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 I don't have time to read much, but you know, I'm constantly buying books, or audio books, to listen on, you know, my drive and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's great. Invest in yourself. Yeah, the A and the bonus. The, sp- <laughs> the, the right. way it's not even uh what you said a thousand x your, a thousand your x i'm telling you, a thousand x dude it's true it's 100 percent true you know it is true all right so we're already at the end of the hour already um but um there's some uh questions uh on the comments so i'll, I'll read those questions and can you okay. uh, try to answer i'm not i'm not sure how much time you have on your channel you got you got you're not limited to like an hour. No, right? no, 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 no. no. Okay, this is okay. a paid service, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a full version. All right. Uh, key event. So, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave them, and we'll, we'll we'll go through those questions right now. You know, we'll talk about seven ways to leverage right. your tax returns this year and this decade, and even a special uh, uh, way to leverage uh, your money. So, uh, leave it, and we'll answer these questions. Key Vang says, uh, as is lease option the same as seller financing? No, it's a different thing. Seller financing, the seller's carrying the mortgage. Yeah. You know, okay. so lease option is, you know, it's different. You're leasing with the option to purchase. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, it's a little bit different. You could sort of say it's seller finance, but uh, it's not really true seller finance. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 a it's it kind it's a it's a cousin <laughs> subject. You know, it's kind of related somewhat. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chai says hi there, Mo hustlers. Uh, yeah, Chai, we're 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 trying to we're trying to do work. We're trying to be like you, man. That's right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, he asks again. Uh, let's see. Who's the audience? Uh, oh, okay. So Keith's asking mainly about can you do a lease, uh, lease option sandwich essentially? And yes, you can. Yes. Yep. That's that's a very good strategy, and it's it's a little detailed, so we're not gonna have time to go into it. But it's a fantastic strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you do a lease uh, option sandwich, you need to let the uh, the original owner uh, know that that's what you're gonna do. So don't do it behind their back. You know, just let them know that that's what you're going to do. Uh, and a lot of times that's okay. Um, or find someone that's okay with it. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, John. Uh, John, my nephew, he, he's on the call. Marcy Mayer Xiong uh, asks, where should we start first if we want to become a property investor? So we talk a little bit about that. But if she's brand new, where, where should you start? Which of these strategies should you have her start? Well, if you're brand new, then um, <clears throat> what I recommend you do is uh, find somebody who's done it and just the, the fastest way to learn is find someone who's done it and uh, work with them. That's oh. basically the best way. Yeah, I mean, yep. honestly, that's probably the best way. And either through um, you know, net, networking groups, maybe you can go to like a local RIA and then find somebody that you can kind of like uh, feel comfortable working with that you trust and just say, like, listen, I'm new and uh, I want to do a deal with you and I, you know, and if you can walk me through it, I don't mind, um, you know, uh, partnering with you with 50 50, you know. Yeah. And a lot of these seasoned guys, they, they would love to help you. You know, a lot of these guys that have made a lot of money in real estate, they're very humble, you know, they'll, um, they'll help you out with it. You know? so, yeah. so that would be my recommendation is find somebody who's done it, work with them. You know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and Chia did uh, put like a mentorship in the group uh, or try yeah. put a mentorship there on the group. So you guys could go find mentors there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Kusion asks, uh, Zach, do you offer a mentorship program? Um, yeah, you know, so I've been doing some six-week workshop in my local town. I have some apprentices that I'm working with. Uh, I'm rolling out some programs, so for sure, I'm um, not sure what town you're in, but... Uh, I'm He's here in Minnesota. So. Okay, I'm, I am planning on coming to Minnesota um, soon, uh, probably in the you know, late spring, early summer. And do a seminar, then you know, I'll, you know, let you guys know what I do and give you, you know, all the insight on what I actually do, all the marketing and things like that. You know, so yeah, you know, um, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. How? So how's your? So Zach does have, uh, you know, a mentorship program, sort of. <laughs> how's that going, man? Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, so I got a, uh, I got a bunch of students I'm working with, uh, hands on, and uh, 
Yeah, and they're learning a lot and uh, they're, they're all brand new. So it's, yeah. you know, they're going through the learning curve and, you know, we're looking at properties every day and we're talking every day about numbers. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you just got to do that. You just got to jump in. And, you know, like I tell my students, they look like, guys, I mean, how are you going to learn how to swim? You're going to learn how to swim reading a book or you're going to learn how to swim by going to the pool? You know, so I tell these guys this. So I said, look, you can't learn real estate reading, but go, let's go, to, let's go look at properties. Let's go, let's go check out this stuff. Let's make some offers. Let's run some numbers, you know? Yeah. So, so I threw this guy in the pool and now they're kind of learning how to swim and uh, they're, they're, they're loving it. It's great, you know? Yeah. So I think one of my buddies is uh, down there in San yeah. Diego. Uh, yeah. He's he hanging out with you with that That's program, right? right? Yeah. 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 So shout out to Denley. Yeah. Um, we used to do a lot of photography stuff together. So <laughs> if you're listening to this, continue, yeah. man. You guys are doing good. Uh, maybe I'll come, I'll come down there to look at real estate with you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a tax write-off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe we should have uh, I, maybe I talk to Chai and a couple of the other guys. Uh, maybe, maybe next year we should have, uh, or this year, we should have a conference down there. You know, we'll, we'll do like those guys, the one of those crews, real estate crews, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they could compare. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get, we'll get a, a celebrity to be on the cruise too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let me see. Key, <coughs> uh, Key asked again, uh, he's got a lot of questions, uh, Key Vang. Uh, how, how much meat does wholesaler leave on the bone for flippers? How, how much do you leave on... Uh, uh, on your uh, wholesale. Uh, you know, it, 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 first of all, it depends on your your town. You know, so for example, if you're in the Midwest, like uh, like uh, Cleveland or West or Milwaukee, things like that, then then the usual average uh, wholesale fee is about five grand. Uh, but here in here in Southern California, I teach my guys. I said that our average wholesale fee is twenty five thousand, simply because you know we're 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 getting a property that's five hundred grand that's worth eight hundred, and so we're not gonna wholesale for five grand. It's just like you know, it's a joke. You know, so um, it depends on your town. But if you're in Stockton, which I think you are, yeah, you should be around ten grand. You know, okay. uh, it's pretty pretty normal. You know, for for your town. Um, but like, if you're in, like I say, um, you know, somewhere in Memphis, Tennessee, or North Carolina, I think, then the average wholesale over there is about five grand. You know? uh, yeah, so that's good. Uh, I think you're talking asking more about like uh, like. If you sell it to an investor, how much does that investor usually make when they rehab the house? So, um, like, what's their spread usually? Yeah, you know, the, the, the I use the usual formula. I teach my guys the usual formula. I take, um, you know, it's kind of like I tell these guys to make an offer, which is pretty much 50% of uh, the ARV, you know? Yeah. So, if it's 100 grand, we offer, I'm just using rough numbers. I know everybody's market is different, but 100 grand. We try to get this property for forty-five to fifty grand, right? Uh, so from that fifty grand, you know, we put our five percent on that, or no, not five percent, but we put our five grand. So we'll be wholesaling it for fifty-five. You know, usually these uh, wholesale properties typically um, have about ten to fifteen percent rehab costs. Yeah. So in this case, sir, it's probably going to be about ten to fifteen grand of rehab costs. The investor should walk away with. Uh, about twenty five to about twenty five twenty five percent profit yep. is what they're looking yep. at. You know? Yep. Yeah. How how my formula works. You know. Yep. That yeah. Around twenty twenty five to thirty yeah. percent. Yeah. That that's yeah, usually exactly. how much uh, you leave for the rehabber. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the exact. Yeah. Tip. Yeah. Pretty typical. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a rehabber, so I always look for that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and and these wholesalers, there's I mean these these rehabbers, they're smart. You can't you can't you can't you can't blindfold them. You know they yeah. they, they they run ARVs, they run the numbers. So you know they you you know you're basically showing showing them what they already know. But you know you can't just fool them. They're, they're, you know they're not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, key ask again uh, about syndications. Who really control the property if the person wants to sell it? Uh, or, uh, so a key syndication, the general partners are the the general partners or the the sponsors. Uh, they're kind of the same thing, um, just different terminology for it. But they're the one that usually controls what to do with the uh, our property, and they they usually <coughs> before you invest, they they'll have a packet of what the strategy is. Uh, what are they gonna do with the property? You know whether you know they're gonna fix it and refi it. 
or you know different exit strategies you know maybe like once it's stabilized three years from now they might sell it or five years from now they might refi so it's all in that packet the key so um if you're interested message me i could send you a, a sample packet that other uh multi-family syn <coughs> the other syndicator sent me so you could take a look at that i might have to block out some of the information but like personal information <laughs> Uh, but the numbers are, are generally the same. Uh, let me see. Uh, CTD uh, says, good information. Uh, she needs you guys as mentors. So, hey, uh, T, if you want Zach to be your mentor, just reach out to him, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let me see. Uh, I need to, yes, uh, Peter. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> You need to make your money work for you. That's what this show's about. Uh, Ku said, what, Ku Xiong asked, what life insurance companies do you guys currently go through? So I, I guess maybe the carrier or the broker? Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, um, there's a lot of good companies out there, guys, you know. Um, so, um, you know, I'm sure that if you talk to a, like a local life insurance agent, you know, yeah. they will be able to uh, direct you to, uh, which company to put in? So you're, hey, you're also, around. yeah, you're also a life insurance agent, right? I am. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm licensed, but I don't, I don't, I don't hustle it. I use it, um, you know, so that I can use my particular strategies, and I, I only use it to help like a small group of people to do yeah. what I do and things like that. I don't necessarily go out there and hustle it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in the process of getting my license too. So yeah. if you have uh, questions, just reach out to me, cool, or or or. Uh, uh, Zach, but essentially there's two parts to life insurance. You have the broker or the agent, and then there's a bunch of carriers or the large companies that actually insure. So uh, those, I find most of them they're pretty similar. Uh, some might have better products, you know, uh, but you just have to find the right product. Uh, so yeah, talk to an right, agent. Yeah, find the right product, find the right agent too, because not all the agents know these kind of stuff. Just just as an FYI, a lot of these guys won't understand the concept of you know um you know have, using you know a cash value life insurance as as an alternative um financial product they won't understand yep. so just kind of talk to a few agents you know yep yep <coughs> let me see ties bank said who uh, you should use mutual trust all that yeah okay so uh reach out to tai too tai bank he's a awesome financial guy so um i don't think he's doing life insurance anymore but Hey, you would ever want to talk about finance? Reach out to Ty. Sorry, Ty. Uh, I, I'm 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 flooding your inbox. <laughs> uh, let's see. Have a one on one, a one on one class for wholesaling in the future. Uh, <coughs> yes, Marcy, we could we can do that. Uh, we have a seg. Um, we had a show that we talked about wholesaling already. But if uh, Marcy, if you guys want more about wholesaling, yeah, I think definitely uh, we could discuss that. Um, let me see. Uh, Tyven as Zach, which a bank do you leverage for uh your HELOC? Uh, I guess you're down there. So do you use like a do you use like a national? You you done HELOCs? Yeah, yeah, I've done HELOCs, so, but um. <clears throat> so do you, you know, use like a national brand or like a local credit union brand of bank? Yeah, well, you know, obviously, I mean, if. <clears throat> HELOCs are best if you, um, you know, go to your local credit union. They're usually pretty good with uh, HELOCs. Okay. Um, yeah. I actually, um, I actually don't qualify for HELOC. Amazingly, <laughs> I, I show, no, I show too much losses on my tax return. Um, so, because you know, they everything is yeah. kind of like full docked with these HELOCs. So that's why I, I leverage yeah. my life insurance as my HELOC. You know, yeah, so yeah. I have uh, all my money. I, I throw it, I load it up. You know, and then when I need it, I just pull the money out like a HELOC. Except that my money is actually working much harder than a HELOC, you know. But yeah, the, the the best person to qualify would be someone with a W two that right, they're, exactly. they're still doing the W two. I actually don't qualify. Yeah. Some property. So yeah. if if you're still working, you don't have to call in like Zach said and hey, well, I'm not coming in. Yeah. We don't <laughs> but call in use that well. to leverage <laughs> the, you know to leverage yeah. these other strategies until you're like I don't need it until you don't qualify like Zach. Yeah. And that's that's when you know that you're good. When you don't qualify anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, Ty asks again for for personal property. 
Oh, oh, he locked for personal property and investment. Uh, I, I think we kind of answered that already. So, yeah, um, uh, that's all the questions we have. If you guys have more questions <coughs> and you're watching this in the future, go ahead and leave the uh, uh, comments uh, and questions below, and then uh, you know we'll we'll try to uh, answer those questions. So, uh, yeah, we're like over the hour already. Uh, but that's awesome. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Zach, for coming back on and you know uh, uh, helping you know. Uh, the community by giving these uh, different ways that we could leverage our tax return this year. So don't just spend your tax return, like put it in an instrument or a vehicle that you could leverage it and help you in the future, right? Absolutely. And let me leave you guys with something here. Uh, <clears throat> most importantly, so first of all, like I said in the beginning, we're starting a new decade here, you know, not, yeah. ne next 10 years. So I know that for those of you who are listening here, I know that in the next 10 years, you got all, you're all going to be millionaires. So the key to it is this. I, I, I can predict your future. I can tell you right now, I can predict your future. If you guys take action, the next 10 years from now, all of you guys will be millionaires. If you don't take action, I know exactly what's going to happen to you. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to be 10 pounds heavier, all right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to be 10,000 in debt, and you're going to have 10,000 more excuses. You know? yeah. I know that. So for the next 10 years, you're either going to be a millionaire or you're going to be 10 pounds heavier, 10,000 in debt, or 10,000 more excuses. So guys, don't make excuse on your life. Go out there and do it. Take action. Partner with somebody. You know, reach out. Learn something. And you can change your life in the next 10 years. All right, guys? Yeah. That's awesome, man. I don't want to, I don't want to add any more pounds. So I guess <laughs> I'll have to be a millionaire. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, with that said, uh, I think we had done book recommendations in the past already, so we're not going to uh, uh, do that this time around. But uh, we'll leave it at what Zach said. Uh, don't, don't, don't be heavy. Don't, 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 don't add 10 pounds. Uh, so you, you don't have a choice. You have to be a millionaire. So you guys, all of us, this coming decade, let's you know, work, put, uh, you know, um, put strategies and take actions together. And you know, in 10 years, we'll all be here and all of us will be millionaires. Absolutely. All right. With that said, uh, thanks again, Zach, for coming on the Fang right. Real Estate Show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for asking your questions um, and commenting and watching. And we'll see you guys next week, right? All right, guys. All right. Thanks again, Zach. I'll see you guys. Yeah. See all you guys.